Hey, it's Sandra. Do you want something a little special for Valentine's Day? Me too. I have lots of ideas. I've been teaching lots of classes on it, but this one I thought you'd enjoy. Come on, I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to start out. I saw this beautiful photo, a uh, public domain uh, type of photo, and I thought it'd be so simple and yet beautiful. And so two heart-shaped balloons, if you wanted to, you could make it into a bouquet. So you could do three, five, if you have a family of a couple of children, for example, or just a beautiful look. Uh, so let's get started with that together. I have the, the whole class on Patreon, but I wanted to give you a quickie version of it because it's quite simple. And here we go. I'm going to do a little bit of water. You know, sometimes people go, should I do wet on wet? Should I do a different style sky? I teach many styles of skies because I'm kind of a sky freak. I don't know about you. Don't you feel that that's one of the signs that you're in love with watercolor when you go outside and look at skies? I know I do. So I'm just kind of pay, um, painting water, clean water randomly. I have a Paul Rubens quill brush, a number six, but any larger brush will do. And now I'm going to go in and, oh my goodness, I'm in a phthalo kind of mood. It sounds like a song. I'm in a phthalo frame of mind, but not a heavy Caribbean ocean phthalo frame of mind. I'm more in an aqua E next to the red. So I'm swirling. I'm not lifting. I'm not, um, I'm not making it too complicated. I have a few little splotches where um, that old phthalo <laughs> came in and got serious with me. So I am gonna blend those out, but that's all I'm doing. Do you see that? I'm just having fun. Just kind of getting that old beautiful blue going. And I splotched on it, but even that's okay. So there's my splotch. Here is my sky, and I hope you get how pretty it is doing nothing. <laughs> Just kind of blotching on some pretty strokes, and once again, letting the water do its thing. Now, if we wanted to do um, the lifting, uh, we certainly could, and it would be beautiful. If we wanted to do the clouds um, the way that the sky is, you could do them this way, you could pull them all over the place, but I'm just doing like a real soft, easy sky. It's got some lines on it. I like them, but if I don't like them, we know what to do, right? We just dry our brush off as if we're lifting and we're just gonna soften them slightly. And I really like them enough that I don't want to do it. You know, we're in that in-between stage that you got to be careful with lifting too much. I'm just using a 9 by 12 I haven't taped it down. It's going to warp a little bit because I'm using so much watery paint and water. And that's fine. When it warps, you know what to do. Just turn it upside down or whichever way it's warping. And just flatten it under a heavy book and you'll be okay. So I'm going to hit this real quick, just so I can show you a fast version of this. I'm gonna hit this really fast with a dryer. And I tried to hit especially those spots. I tell you, a dryer I don't use all the time. Some people get in the habit and it does change the way the paint dries. This time it's okay, but you can use it even to help you move uh, your paint around. So I'm surface dry, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna just draw a heart. And I wanna do it really, really 
loose. I didn't have the graphite pulled out from another class. So I'm going to do it very loose. And it's not at all even, so it's probably turned or something. I'm sure it's not because I didn't do a good job. So I'm going to try it again. With hearts, if you need to, go ahead and uh, trace it. But hearts, if you do first one side and then the other, it's usually pretty helpful. So I'm going to go in when you um, when you do your pencil marks on top of a painting that's dry, and this is barely in that category of being dry, you can go ahead and tap gently, especially if it's bone dry. So you can erase things on top. You cannot erase pencil marks if you start with them. Once that water, it's not even the watercolor, once that water seals it in while you're painting with your watercolor, it's all over. You cannot go back in and erase, okay? So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna use a size eight. And if any of you have um, this type of a brush, which is an oval, but many people call it a cat's tongue. Um, this one happens to be a three quarter inch and it's silver black velvet, which is the type of uh, brushes that I normally use. What's helpful with this is it's got a big belly, but it also has a good point. So you can do the outlines of it. But I'm just gonna stick with, at this point, I'm gonna stick with eight. And I think I'm going to use um, alizarin crimson at this point. I'm leaning over for my paints. There's my alizarin crimson. And I like it because I want it to be heavy enough that it's gonna hold its own on top of the sky. We didn't mask it. We just had fun penciling it in. And this whole balloon is loose, isn't it? Everything about it. So I'm just going in with my number eight and I'm keeping the point away from me. And I'm doing the edges first. And the reason I'm saying the point should be away from me is that will help your edge be cleaner. So there you go. I'm making sure that there's enough paint on it that it's going to fill things in. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get highlights. So here's my alizarin crimson. Smoothing it out to have a good clean edge from every angle. There we go. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I want it to have some highlights to it as if it's a balloon. So I could either lift or I'm just gonna take a, a piece of paper towel. I usually tear the little pieces in half just to be able to do some kind of cool things with it, I think. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make some little highlights in a few spots. And there's a couple ways that I could be making highlights, but this is a nice little quick, easy one. And I'm actually even painting with the edge right now, just to kind of have some fun with it. So there is my first one. And I'm going to do a second one here. And that one, I'm probably going to use a different color just so that you have two sides to it. I smeared right here and what a perfect place to smear, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to do a cute little balloon. I think I had a little pink on that one, so I went back in. I'm gonna do a cute little balloon tie area so we know it's a balloon. Um, I might do with this some cadmium red. I might do some um, rose quin. Um, what might I do? <laughs> uh, rose matter quin is the color I'm thinking of. Let's go ahead and do that together real quick. There's my Rose Matter. I love both because 
alizarin is definitely a cool or sometimes I consider it a neutral color. And there's a little bit of a purpley shade in this that I think they complement each other very well. And again, if you need to hit it with a hair dryer and keep that coming, you can see that they are different sizes, which implies that one's closer. And they're also different shapes, which implies one's turning. And all of that is good as far as I'm concerned. I might even, I have a little color left right here on my brush, and I might even put a little interesting uh, darker shades so that the highlight has an even more dramatic section to it. So there you go. I'm going to, while I have my paint on my brush with my eight, I'm gonna add that to it. And then all I'm going to do is add a string to it. I'm not going to take your time right now with that, but either a little bit of twine or one of my favorite strings is butcher string that you tie rose up. But I'm just going to glow, glow it, bleh, glue it, easy for me to say. I'm going to glue it so that it actually goes off the paper. And I'm going to put highlights on that. And I'm going to glue these down. I might have them look like they're um, they're just sailing. Someone released them, which means they'd be straight down. Or I might tie them together and have them go at an angle on both sides. I think that might be real sweet too. You could put on this with pastel pencils. You could put names if you wanted to. Or you could use phrases often uh, colored candy, little candy hearts, be mine, whatever. So this I think would be a really sweet little Valentine, easy idea for you. And I hope you enjoyed that. Take care.